Welcome to the first part of the first course for Living Expressions. I'm excited by this course because what we can do to help ourselves to bring out the internal in an external way without going too deep into those wounds. We can change things of our core beliefs, our trauma, a negative action or event that happened recently. And I've been utilizing this for 20 years and it's been one of the best things that I've discovered and transformed into my own tools. I wanna to give you a short background about how I brought these theories together and how it works. And so through this first course, it's just a background to understand. I know when I learn, I love to understand the meaning behind things so I can understand it too. And that's not what our education system is about, is it? Because in the 19th century with uh, the classical studies and liberalism a theory on uh, knowledge for knowledge's sake and you know all our schools and our education systems have all been based on that in from the 19th century and I know that it certainly didn't help me in my learning through schools but when I did my Master of Adult Education in 2000 it was like a light bulb went on for me when I learned more about popular education theory and the work of Palo Freire in South America it was just inspirational. And so taking popular education theory with the counseling of my undergraduate degree in ethics and bringing that together and all my lived experiences through trauma and uh, working in mental health and wellbeing, uh, um, as well as aid and development sector over the last 20 years, it has really helped me to define um, how I developed my tools and where these come from. So I hope you get an understanding of where that underpinning is so that it will help you feel free and to utilise the tools that I've developed as best as you can because that's what it is all about in the end. It is about you and about freeing yourself from those things that uh, we struggle with. So when I learned about popular education, it, it, um, I just want to give you a bit of background about that in this video, and then we'll move on to some exercises. So Palo Freire, which is the main player of popular education, he wrote a number of books, so I've got most of them in, in the 70s and some, some into the 80s. And so in this 21st, in the 20th century, there was people like George um, Hegel, uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, Karl Marx, and a whole lot of other people that were also um, key players in with Palo Freire. But Palo Freire's work, I understood because he freed oppressed people from places like where he was born in Brazil, in Bolivia, in Chile. And when you read of his stories and how he um, opened those oppressed people and one of the uh, exercises that we'll do next will actually be from Palo Freire's work to help you understand uh, where we are coming from in this background. So really popular education is dialogic learning. So if we take the word dialogue in itself, it's two Greek words that have been put together. Dia meaning between and logos meaning word. So dialogue means the word between us. When you think about when you're having a dialogue with someone, it's those exchanges of words. And we want that to be as equal as possible without any power plays in that. Otherwise, really, who's doing the learning? We construct new meanings out of that and make an effort to really find out what we do not know. That's the best thing about learning, you know, isn't it? So when you think about your dialogue around friends over a meal, how many times do we actually sit there 
and we ask a question. And we don't necessarily answer the question, but we just like look at this question from a number of people's different points of view and we reflect upon that and we act upon that. How many times does that actually happen? Not many. Most of our conversations with friends around meal or families is about regurgitating our past. Someone will say something that reminds us of a memory and we'll go back to that. And then we're not really listening to them because we're waiting to, oh, I want to share my memory. And then other people might be doing the same thing. And so all we have is not really a dialogue, isn't it? It's a regurgitation of the past. How many times have we gone away from meals like that and have actually learned anything? So taking the liberalism theory of knowledge is knowledge for knowledge's sake, popular education says knowledge is a tool. Knowledge is a tool that we could reflect and learn from, we could be free from, but we can't if we continue to put these in sentences with full stops right at the end. Like, yes, when we're writing a book or a paper or those sort of things, yes, we need to be... Uh, in that style but to be free in our learning why not just think of single words or single phrases that capture the essence of that learning that reflects a deeper meaning and helps us to go deeper as we go through it so we questions are actually, Palo Freire would say, questions are more important than answers because it's by the questions that we ask, we learn. And the learner constructs their own knowledge. So if you're listening to this course and about to participate in its exercises, it's not about me at all. I'm just facilitating a place for you to learn, a place for you to construct your own knowledge, a place for you to reflect, and in that process to make meaning of the world, of the world by combining reflection, word and action. That's your role. And that's my role as I do my own reflection and feeling and of my learning as I construct the courses. Everything you learn from me will be about how will you construct your own meaning. That's really important. All the objects, experiences and exercises that I have developed for you is to help you to begin your journey on that reflection, on that action, of your words, but it's about the, what you put into it. Language is best used when it's yours, not copying somebody else's. As Freire states, if I use my own words, then I am developing my own understanding of the world. And naming frees us from being locked in. So these single phrases and words are really important. If you've already gone onto the experience page and clicked on an object and gone through one of those exercises, which we will do in this course if you haven't done it either, those are those times where you can free yourself. So if you see, uh, well, at the moment there's a teddy bear, but it might change soon. But if you see the object and you just name it for what it is, that's a word that someone else has given. Look inside yourself and see meaning within you, constructing your own understanding of what that object means to you. What is it saying to you? What is it connecting to you inside yourself? Because that the outcome is important for yourself. And it might be saying something that you need to hear, that you need to know that otherwise wouldn't have been come unlocked. And that's how we can find our freedom. So naming frees us. 
And the reframing process helps us, the renaming process helps us to go deeper. The reframing process helps us to go even deeper again, where we be more precise and we be more about learning and, and we're more challenged by what it's stating. So let me give you an example. If I put on this baseball cap, we all know it's a baseball cap. That's what we will call it, or we may call it a hat. But if I really looked at it, what does this baseball cap, this hat, say to me? Well, the first thing I would think of, I would name it as an impractical sun shield. Now, for some people, it could be a practical sun shield. It could be just a sun shield for them because it does wonders for making sure that your nose doesn't get burnt, which I've done over and over again in my life. Um, but for me, I absolutely hate wearing hats. Don't know why I joined the Navy where I had to wear 20 of these. <laughs> but, but this, to me, is an impractical sun shield. It's my meaning, which I am bringing. You might name it something else. And then if I look at it again and I rename it from impractical sun shield, I go, well, it's it's a image presenter because every baseball cap has an image usually on it and we usually get them for free because it's something that or, or we buy because it's our favorite sports team for me this is an image presenter which has there are a lot of positive memories to it because I worked for the International Fleet Review in Sydney in 2013 and part of the Royal Australian Navy when I was in there. And so this has a lot of memories attached for me, but I still call it an image presenter because that helps me go deeper from being an impractical sun shield. I might want to represent the IFR and probably would in 10 years from that time, in two years' time. Then if I wanted to go deeper again, I want to reframe it completely because I want to learn. I want to understand more about where does this baseball cap really come from? So I might then name it. It's a symbol of American culture because that's where it came from. The baseball cap that was named in America to, you know, Go for your favourite baseball team. Go the Cubs, White Sox, <laughs> all those type of baseball, right? So that's a way that we can look at different objects and help ourselves to reflect, understand, learn, creating knowledge for a tool in itself so that we can find meaning for ourselves and take that action reflection process and make it vital for our learning, finding outcomes for ourselves and indeed free ourselves from a situation. Now, the baseball cap is not going to have much learning for me internally unless I want to work through some of my Navy trauma. But other objects can. And we will explore these more through this course. This is Dr. Mel Baker. Thanks for listening.